In mathematics, Pappus's hexagon theorem attributed to Pappus of Alexandria states that given one set of collinear points A, B, C, and another set of collinear points A, B, C, then the intersection points X, Y, Z of line pairs A flat and AB, AC and AC, BC and BC are collinear, lying on the Pappus line. These three points are the points of intersection of the opposite sides of the hexagon ABC ABC. It holds in a projective plane over any field, but fails for projective planes over any noncommutative division ring. Projective planes in which the theorem is valid are called Papain planes. The dual of this incidence theorem states that given one set of concurrent lines A, B, C, and another set of concurrent lines A, B, C, then the lines X, Y, Z defined by pairs of points resulting from pairs of intersections AB and AB, AC and AC, BC and BC are concurrent. Concurrent means that the lines pass through one point. Pappus's theorem is a special case of Pascal's theorem for a conic the limiting case when the conic degenerates into two straight lines. Pascal's theorem is in turn a special case of the cayley baccarat theorem. The Pappus configuration is the configuration of nine lines and nine points that occurs in Pappus's theorem, with each line meeting three of the points and each point meeting three lines. In general, the Pappus line does not pass through the point of intersection of ABC and ABC. This configuration is self-dual. Since, in particular, the lines BC, BC, XY have the properties of the lines X, Y, Z of the dual theorem, and collinearity of X, Y, Z is equivalent to concurrence of BC, BC, XY, the dual theorem is therefore just the same as the theorem itself. The Levi graph of the Papus configuration is the Papus graph, a bipartite distance regular graph with 18 vertices and 27 edges. Topic: Proof. Choose projective coordinates with C. Topic: 1, 0, 0, C 0, 1, 0, X Topic 0, 0, 1, A 1, 1, 1 On the lines AC, AC, X, given by X2 Topic X three X one X three X two equals X one. Take the points B Y B to be B. Topic P one one Y one Q one B equals 1 1 r for some p q r the three lines x b psi c b or x 1 equals x 2 p x 2 topic x 3 q x 3 x 1 r so they pass through the same pointer if and only if r q p equals 1 the condition for the three lines C flat, C B and X Y X two equals X one Q X one. Topic X three P X three X two R to pass through the same point Z is R P Q. Topic one. So this last set of three lines is concurrent if all the other eight sets are because multiplication is commutative, so PQ QP. Equivalently, X, Y, Z are collinear. The proof above also shows that for Pappus's theorem to hold for a projective space over a division ring it is both sufficient and necessary that the division ring is a commutative field. 
German mathematician Gerhard Hessenberg proved that Pappus's theorem implies de Sargus's theorem. In general, Pappus's theorem holds for some projective plane if and only if it is a projective plane over a commutative field. The projective planes in which Pappus's theorem does not hold are de Sargassian projective planes over non-commutative division rings, and non-de Sargassian planes. The proof is invalid if C, C, X happen to be collinear. In that case an alternative proof can be provided, for example, using a different projective reference. Topic origins In its earliest known form, Pappus's theorem is propositions 138, 139, 141, and 143 of Book 7 of Pappus's collection. These are lemmas 12, 13, 15, and 17 in the part of Book 7 consisting of lemmas to the first of the three books of Euclid's Porisms. The lemmas are proved in terms of what today is known as the cross-ratio of four collinear points. Three earlier lemmas are used. The first of these, lemma 3, has the diagram below which uses Pappus's lettering, with G for gamma, D for delta, J for theta, and L for lambda. Here three concurrent straight lines, AB, AG, and AD, are crossed by two lines, JB and J, which concur at J also KL is drawn parallel to AZ. Then KJ, JL, KJ, AG and AG, JL, JD, GD and BG, JB. These proportions might be written today as equations KJ, JL Topic KJ, AG, AG, JL, JD, GD, BG, JB, the last compound ratio, namely JD, GD and BG, JB, is what is known today as the cross ratio of the collinear points J, G, D, and B in that order, it is denoted today by J, G, D, B. So we have shown that this is independent of the choice of the particular straight line JD that crosses the three straight lines that concur at A in particular J, G, D, B equals J, Z, H, E, it does not matter on which side of A the straight line J falls. In particular, the situation may be as in the next diagram, which is the diagram for lemma x just as before, we have j, g, d, b equals j, z, h, e. Papus does not explicitly prove this, but lemma x is a converse, namely that if these two cross ratios are the same, and the straight lines b and dh cross at a, then the points g, a, and z must be collinear. What we showed originally can be written as J, infinity, K, L equals J, G, D, B, with infinity taking the place of the non-existent intersection of J, K and AG. Papus shows this, in effect, in lemma 11, whose diagram, however, has different lettering, what Papus shows is de, zh, e, z, h, d, g, b, b, which we may write as d, z, e, h, equals infinity, b, e, g. The diagram for lemma 12 is, the diagram for lemma 13 is the same, but b, a and d, g, extended, meet at n in any case, considering straight lines through g as cut by the three straight lines through a, and accepting that equations of cross ratios remain valid after permutation of the entries, we have by lemma 3 or 11 g, j, e, h, equals g, d, infinity z. Considering straight lines through d as cut by the three straight lines through b, we have l, d, e, k. Topic. G, D, infinity Z, thus E, H, J, G. E, K, D, L, so by lemma X, the points H, M, and K are collinear. That is, the points of intersection of the pairs of opposite sides of the hexagon A, D, E, G, B, Z are collinear. Lemmas 15 and 17 are that, if the point M is determined as the intersection of H, K and B, G, then the points A, M, and D are collinear. That is, the points of intersection of the pairs of opposite sides of the hexagon B, E, K, H, Z, G are collinear. 
Topic other statements of the theorem In addition to the above characterizations of Pappus's theorem and its dual, the following are equivalent statements. If the six vertices of a hexagon lie alternately on two lines, then the three points of intersection of pairs of opposite sides are collinear. Arranged in a matrix of nine points as in the figure and description above and thought of as evaluating a permanent, if the first two rows and the six diagonal triads are collinear, then the third row is collinear. A B C A B C X Y Z display style left begin matrix A and B and C A and B and C X and Y and Z end matrix right that is if A B C A B C abs B C X K X B C Y C A Zab are lines then Pappus's theorem states that X Y Z must be a line. Also, note that the same matrix formulation applies to the dual form of the theorem when A, B, C, etc. are triples of concurrent lines, given three distinct points on each of two distinct lines, pair each point on one of the lines with one from the other line, then the joins of points not paired will meet in opposite pairs at points along a line. If two triangles are perspective in at least two different ways, then they are perspective in three ways. If A B, C D, and F are concurrent and A, F A, and B C are concurrent, then A D, B, and C F are concurrent. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>